Hello, welcome to yet another episode of Beyond the Present Podcast. My name is Animal, and I'm here joined live by Pujix from Toronto, Canada. Hey, my man, how's it going? Everything's awesome. Thank you again. Uh, how are you? I am doing fine, buddy. And, of course, we have Siobhan Gold back for yet another amazing episode. Siobhan, my man, how's it going? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? I am doing fine and glad to have you both on board. However, Pujix, first, I heard you might have uh, caught something over there, some kind of, uh, I don't know, you caught a cold or something? Some sort of cold, yeah. So if my voice is a little bit cracking, don't mind me. And one thing, uh, what is it like to get a cold in Canada? Because it's a very cold country in general, right? Well, right now it's actually pretty warm. And uh, (laughs) it was unfortunate. A few days ago it got cold uh, all of a sudden and I wasn't dressed appropriately and I was out in the cold for a long time. Dude, so you caught cold exactly when it got cold and then it got warm again and you you still have the cold. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm over the hump on the curve of the sickness, but I'm still recovering. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Fantastic. So, but still, you can see this, guys. In BTP, we keep working no matter what. You, ca- you catch cold, doesn't matter. You keep working. That's what I like about this. And in this episode, we are talking about tolerating different opinions and having an open mind. So, let's first define for our listeners what we mean by open-mindedness. So, Pujix, how do you define open-mindedness? I mean, it's, uh, it's very self-explanatory by the word itself. It means that uh, although you have a narrow, uh, you know, sort of, if you, if you may, uh, if I may, mind over some, some uh, respective opinion, you have a very specific opinion, so your mind is narrow. It means that when you are faced by a new opinion, somebody else is explaining something to you and they're, they're uh, giving you their own reasoning, you, you open this mind, uh, forget about whatever you believe in at the moment, and try to... A deal with this as if you don't have any opinion on the matter and see if it makes sense. Simply. Interesting. So you said open-minded, like you open your mind. Does that mean that you let in the idea? That is, you let him in? You mean, it means that you let it in to be processed. It doesn't mean that you adopt it for sure. Oh, okay. It, Interesting. It That's about. right. So, Siobhan, how do you define uh, open-mindedness? So I think uh, we have described it pretty well already. Uh, what I believe is it's very important to know the difference between the two, like being open-minded versus being closed-minded. So I would say a person who is open-minded, uh, I mean closed-minded, would not like being challenged all the time, while an open-minded person would be eager, eager to learn and ask the question now and then, why is there a disagreement between me and that person? And then using that as a thoughtful means to expand my own knowledge. And that way, an open-minded person generally can be seen with a greater sense of humility while close-minded people choose to disagree about everything and can be stubborn and then stick to their opinions and they don't like to to be challenged in general. Okay, so if you're open-minded, you're open to being challenged and you mentioned that if you are somehow not as open-minded, you don't like to be disagreed with. So right now, let's talk about disagreeing with other people's opinions. You, Pujix, yes. do you find it easy to disagree with other people or you just somehow find like, dude, let's just not just uh, disagree right now. Let's just forget about it. So do you find it easy to say, hey, sir, excuse me, you're saying what you're saying is bullshit. Like, do you have this attitude in general or you don't like to disagree with other people? Well, I, again, this goes with the open mindedness. I try to respect people's opinion, right? Um, it, it, I mean, it's it honestly really depends on the on the person. Sometimes it's relatively easy, sometimes it's not. But then in general, I wouldn't be very upfront into their face. I mean, I, mean, I would be honest and upfront in that sense, but I wouldn't say, oh, you're, whatever you're saying is bullshit. Uh, bullshit. I would go be like, it doesn't make sense to me for these, for these reasons, and if this is my opinion on the matter, how would you respond? Something like that. Interesting. Siobhan, how do you disagree? Do you find it easy to disagree with other people's opinions, or you somehow tend to be more agreeable? So just like Puya, I'm usually very respectful towards others' opinions, knowing that they must be having some background behind what they're saying. But uh, personally, I feel I may be, I'm most of the times I'm open-minded, but there's times where I'm constantly making statements. So instead of asking questions, I'm saying this or that is the right thing. And then I choose to be stubborn. So that's when I am a close-minded person. Uh, meanwhile, when there's conversations where a whole lot of new ideas and beliefs are being thrown out and I'm asking questions about how they may or may not be right or wrong, that's when I feel I'm an open-minded person. And recently, I believe that I'm more on the curve towards being more open-minded and accepting of what others say, or at least what the rationale behind their opinion is. And you said recently, are you saying that in the past you used to be somehow not so disagree, somehow not agreeable, and you were a little bit uh, close-minded? 
I believe it's all down to communication, right? So I believe in the past there were times when I would communicate in a way where I'm just stating my opinion and as a result, indirectly, I would be deemed to be a little bit close-minded. But now that I've known how to control uh, what I say or think, and uh, that's really helped me. And being an active listener, so... You Interesting. Know, and one question, Shivank, if I disagree with someone right off the bat, yes. does that mean that I am uh, not open-minded enough? Uh, no, that's not what the case is. I believe you, I'm more close-minded when I'm cutting them off constantly. So say they're saying something, I, I'm not letting them be heard. So that way, that makes me more close-minded. You know, if I can easily disagree with someone but choose to frame my opinions as they go and say something that they would be willing to, you know, answer in a more respectful manner, a more professional manner. Interesting. So back to you, Pooja. So you mentioned uh, earlier that you can open your mind and let in the, the idea to come in, not for residing in your head, but actually to be analyzed. I got a question for you right now. What if you genuinely don't have the time to analyze a new idea to figure out if it's okay or not? In that condition, do you still maintain your open-mindedness? Do you still try to consider new ideas that might, may or may not be okay, or you tend to somehow be more closed-minded? What if you genuinely don't have the time? Well, I guess when you when you put it that way, you're putting a pressure on on people, and when you put a pressure on people, you you generally not tend to be open open mindedness because being open minded comes from a place of being sort of relaxed. So in that case, I would have to say if if I'm if I'm forced to choose between opinions, I would definitely stick with mine that I already generated if I have any. That's right on the matter. So, but but if in a perfect situation, if I'm uh, you know behaving perfectly. Then I would go and be like, okay, you know what? This is not a good time to debate this matter. If you're debating, if you're trying to keep an open mind, we need to have time. So let's talk about this some other time. And this this would be, I would say, my perfect behavior. I'm not saying oh, I always do that. Uh, oh, so I you tell the debate. person, okay, so please leave your ideas to my secretary, and once I have the time, I'll review it for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that worse than saying, fuck off, you idiot? Well, it's a polite way of saying <laughs> <laughs> All right, very well. So I like it. So from now on, anytime I have the, I hear this idea that I don't like it, sir, I think you have a very interesting idea. Please leave it to my secretary, and I will consider it hopefully when I have free time. All right, have a, have a nice day. That's a much better way to put it. So with that being said, let us now talk about how we personally deal with opinions that are different than ours. I mean, that's quite common. Like you go around, you hear all sorts of ideas, basically, especially if you're in a kind of field where you tend to see a lot of people and you can meet a lot of people. Let's say you're in business, you're in sales, let's say you're an uh, academic, yeah. you're a teacher. So you hear a lot of different opinions all the time and you want to somehow be able to know how to deal with them. So let's start with Shiv uh, Shivank here. So uh, yeah. Shivank, tell me when you, uh, at, at the first beginning, when, when you encounter with an opinion that is dramatically and drastically different than your own, in that condition, yeah. how do you respond to that? Do you like, uh, for example, feel like it's so weird? I mean, like uh, we're talking about about ideas that are dramatically. I mean, let's say you believe the sky is blue and this guy thinks of the sky to be green. Let's say you believe something to be completely right and this person portrays it as being completely wrong. In these drastic uh, measures, in these uh, cases where there's so much difference, how do you tend to respond to those different opinions? Okay. So, as I said earlier, it's always about effective communication. So, it doesn't matter what opinions I or that other person have uh, as if I cannot convey them across to the person. So if I am going to interrupt the person right away and say you're ridiculously wrong, it may not have the desired effect. But if I choose to listen, hear that person out, be an active listener, and then, you know, in the meantime, frame whatever, you know, logical points that I can say to that person, then I would, you know, say that out once the person has spoken his or her opinion. If I keep on interrupting the person, uh, it might turn into an argument instead of a civilized conversation. And once we move away from it, I've seen quite often that uh, debates turn into something personal. And wow. this is what we really need to move away from as a society. Interesting. We're all, we're all prone to having opinions, but it's uh, beyond that. You know. So you actually listen carefully all the way through, let's say for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and then you say, mm -hmm, so sir, are you done? Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. So you actually wait for the guy to finish and then you tell him. <laughs> I'll keep a cut off. I'll keep a decent, you know, realistic time frame considering how relaxed I am or say, you know, if I'm sitting at a bar with some people or it's rather, you know, a more professional setting, it really depends. 
I think when you're in a bar, it's a lot easier to be agreeable. As they keep talking about bullshit, you just keep drinking. Like, yeah, just do you, dude, exactly. you keep talking. You keep, yeah, you're right, man. I'm fucking drunk. When I'm drunk, everybody's right, okay? Somehow like this. But it depends also on the environment as well as the place where you meet each other. It also depends on how you guys want to work uh, together on this. Let's say you're in a uh, middle of a project and you're working together. In that case, it's very different than just having a pleasant conversation at a bar somewhere, right? So, Pujix, yes. how about you? How do you deal with drastically different opinions than your own? Well, I mean, in a sense, I could say I'm a physicist, and by extension, I would classify as a scientist. So my most interesting, like my, uh, I, I'm most interested in why this person has a different opinion, such wow. a different opinion. Like when you're saying that, for example, that person is saying, okay, the sky is not blue, it's green, <clears throat> then clearly there is something uh, fundamental difference between me and him or her. So my, my first question is why this person is thinking so drastically. Uh, than than me or somebody else, for example. That's so right. one 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 uh, uh, answer could be potentially one theory could be maybe this person is colorblind. Simply. Wow. So 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 then then there's no point in even arguing. So why would I argue with a person that is colorblind about the color of the sky? I, I wouldn't. So so that, that you took that like example something. quite literally. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good example. I That's think. right, so, so sir. Like, you your have... eyes are fucking bullshit. You cannot distinguish colors. Thank you very much. The co- the sky is blue. That's right. So uh, I get it, but still, uh, there are times where I mean, you mentioned you're a scientist. You like to consider the opinions. You want to find out the whys. Why is this guy thinking this way and whatever? It's all true and fair. It makes complete sense. Uh, but let's say that this person person's opinion will affect your own life or project or work right how about in that case where there are consequences to agreeing or allowing that opinion to be expressed in the first place right well in, in that scenario then if, I, if i'm to change this so say my goal is to change that person's opinion still if i have a good understanding of what is fundamentally different between me and him that causes this difference of opinion it helps me a lot to convince him better because then i know well, where he's coming from and why he's so attached to his idea. Interesting. Good point. And uh, since in this show we like to talk about both uh, sides of the aisle and both angles, let's take a set back and uh, look at the concept of uh, basically open-mindedness from the opposite angle, which is being closed-minded. So guys, just out of curiosity, could there be any advantage, any uh, anything good about being closed-minded? I mean, let's talk, talk about the pros and cons of both, right? So first, Siobhan, yeah. let's compare... Somebody who lives a pretty open-minded lifestyle and somebody who's just closed-minded all the time, very opinionated and just keeps on doing things that he or she believes in. So let's think of the pros and cons of each. How do you uh, uh, think about the pros and cons of being uh, closed-minded? Could there be any advantage at all in being closed-minded? Uh, I believe so, yes. So, for example, if there's someone in a position of power that we see a lot lately, they need to cut out whatever... Uh, opinions others have when they're actually working on something so uh, one example would be trump i know it's a bad example but he chooses to be close-minded about whatever issues are around him and he chooses to do what he wants to so in that kind of uh position it might be effective as a leader for example oh my goodness you're the first person who called trump an effective leader oh although i forgot you're in canada not in america that's right i'm saying i'm saying a leader a leader in general would be you know if he chooses to not, you know, consider anyone else's opinion and work according to his own work ethics, his ideas, his beliefs, then he may get better results. Interesting. Than so you're saying that leadership becomes more effective in general. I mean, forget about Trump as an example, not a very good one, but let's just uh, think about leadership as a whole. You're saying that yes. being uh, basically uh, closed minded is an asset for a leader. Uh, not necessarily, but say if someone's working style is like that, then that might be a pro in that case. So it depends on the type of leadership, obviously, right? Certain exactly. leaders work better. So how about open-minded leadership? Isn't that a little bit too wishy-washy and weak? Let's say, uh, for example, you are uh, the president of, let's say, Canada. I think you guys have a prime minister, right, right there. It's not prime a president, minister. right? So let's say you are <laughs> yeah. the prime minister. I think he's pretty young too, right? 
So uh, let's say you're the Prime Minister of Canada, the next Prime Minister, Siobhan Gold for the office, v- votes for 20, 20, whatever, whatever your elections, right? So yep. let's say you want to make a deal or let's say you want to arrange something for global warming and you personally believe that global warming is a serious problem, but people around you say, no, it is not. There is no global warming. In that condition, if you want to make a decision, isn't it better to stick to your guns and just be closed-minded or you actually will consider the opinion of those who believe there is no such thing as a global warming well that's a difficult question and i'm sure the prime minister of canada faced that issue in past year with the pipeline so i mean that i'm sure there'll be people who'll be choosing different sides like whether he should have done one thing or the other but i believe he has to again consider the pros and cons it's it's a team it's a collective responsibility up top so he need, he probably needs to consult his advisors and make sure he makes an educated decision so weighing the costs and benefits of say an environmentally dam- potentially damaging deal then he has to consider what pros and cons there would be and then make a decision rather than sticking to whether being open minded or closed minded would be the end re- would help with the end result Interesting. Pujix, what is your perspective about closed-mindedness and leadership, in, uh, basically in specific, and of course in general, the pros and cons of being closed-minded? Uh, well, yeah, I, in general, I do believe there is benefits in both uh, in a given circumstance and, um, and in specific as well. In, in leadership, I mean, in general, you want to keep an uh, open mind, but uh, open-mindedness is very good for discussion, debate, and coming to a resolution. But unfortunately, we can have discussion till eternity. And exactly. Not this discussion can continue yeah. forever. It can continue. True, true, true. And it, it's been happening, honestly. We still do discuss Julius Caesar's uh, you know, wars north of Italia, for example, at the time. <laughs> wow. Which, 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 which is still an ongoing discussion, although it's passed thousands of years, literally. So, so my point being... Uh, you do. You keep an open mind during discussion. Discussion is done. Time for action. Then you have to stick to your guns because it's time for action. Action doesn't do well with constantly changing your mind, unless like you you figure out you're absolutely wrong. That's that's fine. Changing your your path. But then until then, if it's if it's in the cloud, like even to this point, um, you know the the. Pentagon scientists and, and the Pentagon especially regarding the climate change are ca- are calling this a national security 99.9%. Wow. I think there's no argument as if it's like still, yeah, there's a portion, like there's a chance that this might not turn into national security. Uh, there's America. one tiny problem here because there's, of course, yeah. his, his decisions don't matter that much, but the president of the United States disagrees with you right here. Thank you very much for that. That's right. So <laughs> but just, way, well, th- there's only one problem. It's just, just a very tiny problem. And that's the president. President Trump disagrees with you right now, says there is no yeah, such well, thing as so, global so warming. This, this is why. This is where I hoped he would uh, keep an open mind. But again, it's time for action, so he has to stick to his gun. I Interesting. Very well. So you talked about this one and the pros and cons. Let's now talk about the pros and cons of actually being open-minded. So, Shivank, uh, what are the advantages as well as disadvantages of being open-minded? Okay. So if we are open-minded, you know, you know so when we are brought up, our br- upbringing consists of you know, being brought up with a few sets of beliefs and values. And we usually, generally speaking, choose to surround ourselves with friends or re- relationships with people who have these in common with us. So it can really be refreshing to have this new sense of perspective and you know, to ask more questions. And uh, one fundamental thing I believe that open-mindedness gives us is makes us be, it helps us be more vul- vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So there's a sense of admittance with whatever we do that I may not know it the best. So there's someone always out there who can help me build on my ideas and foundations and, you know, come up with something even better. So it fills us with a sense of honesty. And for me, uh, I believe it has helped me make better friends, better uh, connections or relationships with people that might matter more in my life. So, yeah, these are some pros that I think there are. And cons are, you know, Puya talked about, like, if you're not sticking to your guns, if you're not um, assertive about what you believe in, then it can turn out to be a con, just constantly looking to others to, you know, help your open mind. Interesting. So, Pujix, the pros and cons of being open-minded. Well, I think we've talked about pros of open-mindedness, of course, uh, quite a lot, and that's uh, that's very good. It helps you grow. It helps you learn, the understand. Be a scientist. Be the next Albert Einstein. <laughs> 
<laughs> sure, yeah, in, in a sense. Like, if, if Albert Einstein didn't keep an open mind about, um, you know, uh, his theory of rel relativi uh, relativity, which didn't make any logical sense at the time, uh, based on the, 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 the things we knew, he would never come to the conclusion. Wow. So that's definitely, that's definitely a, pro, a pro, of course. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, when, again, when it comes, uh, time comes to the, to action itself, if you're constantly not sure and changing your opinion, it doesn't look, especially in a leadership position, it doesn't look very confident. It doesn't, people don't take you seriously in general. Hold on a second. You, you just use, use the word confidence as well as people taking you seriously. So you're saying that if I am open minded, I will be perceived as less confident and also not as fit for leadership. No, that's not correct. It's it's correct if it's times for action. And you're, I, actually, I would admire greatly a leader who's open-minded. But when time comes for action, he needs to make a decision. And he, if he's not sure, then there's a problem. Wow. Uh, then there, there are consequences. Sometimes making the uh, wrong action choice is better than not taking any action at all. Interesting. Uh, sometimes, not necessarily always. But point being, you eventually want to take some action, even if it's... Uh, it's hard to say this in, in theory, but it happens because you, you can't guarantee that you're always right. Uh, you're you're running the chances and numbers, so you wow. might be wrong, but you still want to take action. Interesting. Because at, at least you're not at least you're not disappointed at not taking any action. Because if you don't take an action and you're well, something goes wrong, which most likely will, then then uh, then you're like unless you choose not to make an action, that that could be the action of inaction. But mainly, if you don't decide something and then something goes wrong. You'd be blaming yourself and others will too. You had a chance to do it. Interesting. But if you did, others, others will still blame you perhaps, but at least you uh, have the clear conscience of, I did the best I could at the time. This is what it turned out. Wow. You see, uh, now that I heard Shavang's story that he actually uh, worked on himself to become more open-minded over the years, and of course your case as well, we're both uh, basically pr pr proponents of uh, being open-minded. We like to be advocates of this issue, but from my perspective where you're talking, I think that it's uh, somehow the right balance between the two might give us the answer. Because let's be honest, if you're completely open-minded, then you will never, ever decide on anything, right? You will never, ever have any convictions or beliefs or ideas about any matter because everything is up for discussion, right? And that's, I don't think, is a very good perspective. On the other hand, if you're completely closed-minded, then you become... <clears throat> Uh, the next president of the... Oh, my God. Forget about it. But, but the thing is this. The problem here is like this. We want to find the right balance. So I want to ask you right now, because we are all for being open-minded, but I'm here to say that I think the best approach is a balance between the two. I really don't believe that if you're completely open-minded, you because you cannot do anything. Because if you're really... I mean, look at the definition. If you're truly a hardcore open-minded person all the way through then you will never, ever have any conviction about anything. On the other hand, if you're closed-minded, then you will never, ever change your opinion and you will never learn anything new because you're just closed-minded and you'll end up ruining the world, basically. So uh, with that being said, let's talk about striking that right balance. And I th of course, I think mm -hmm. most of us around the world, our problem is to become more open-minded because I think uh, closed-mindedness nowadays is a lot more rampant than open-mindedness. So let's talk about Absolutely. striking that healthy, effective balance between open-mindedness right. as well as closed-mindedness so we can actually make decisions, we can actually have beliefs and convictions, stick with them, yet remain open to consider other opinions and perhaps make modifications to our own beliefs and change our opinions along the way. So let's start with Shivang here. Let's say one of our listeners right now is extremely open-minded. The other one is extremely closed-minded. So what is your strategy? What was your own journey of becoming more open-minded and having that balance between the two? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I realized I learned a lot more by being open-minded at certain stages of, say, a conversation or, say, if I'm working on a project. You you see that every day on a – say, if you're working in teams, there's always going to be different kinds of people, uh, different strengths and different personalities. So one person may be open-minded, the other person may be closed-minded. Eventually, the goal is to get the job done or to, you know, achieve a common objective. And for that, effective communication is important. Asking the right questions is important. So for me, that has been really helpful. I believe you have to hold both opposing sides uh, to kind of build a better, you know, and, and find a common ground, of course. Yes. And interesting. And Shivang, what is your recommendation to our listeners? So what tips and advice do you have for them to actually start becoming more open-minded? 
Ah, oh, that would be a difficult question because everyone would have their own respective beliefs and values. So you're saying there are no universal approaches to becoming open-minded. You have to create your own way, right? Yes, yes, because it's it's whatever fits people, how they can get rid of those very hard-worn beliefs and values and strike the right balance. Because anyone who says that they're an open-minded person itself can sound as a biased statement. So <laughs> we should never be biased saying that, oh, I'm an open-minded person. So but true. We have to treat it on a situational basis. How open-minded can I afford to be in that situation? That would be a very important question. Exactly. Very nice. So, Pujiks, what is your tips? Uh, what are your tips and advices about those who would like to become more open-minded if they are extremely close-minded, and for those who are very open-minded to actually have some convictions and beliefs and strike a healthy, effective, and uh, productive balance among the two? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really difficult question to answer, especially because um, I'm a little open-minded about the whole <laughs> situation right now, meaning I haven't really decided where it should exactly be. But very generally, I can talk about it because that's relatively easy. And that will be, you know, in general, we want to uh, be, when it's time for discussion, as I discussed before, when it's time for debate and trading opinion, I would go with, yeah, 100% be, be open-minded, try to grasp the idea of why you think this is and why it's not. It helps you understand the other person better, regardless of the future, whether you actually adopt it or not. Um, mm. it, it, it helps with knowing people as well. So that, that would be, and when time comes for action, uh, make a choice and stick with it based on the debates that you had previously. Um, and so I, I'll give you a very short example, a very sure. silly example, actually. And that would be, let's say me and you and Siobhan want to go to a restaurant and we want to have food. And mm-hmm. I suggest restaurant A, you suggest restaurant B, and then Siobhan can, well, we all are just debating whether A is better or B. And then no, I buddy. Like, I'm asking I, the first question that pops to mind is who's paying. Uh, that's not. My, that's my first question. <laughs> <laughs> let's, say we're, let's say we're splitting the bills. That's right. <laughs> uh, so, so, but yeah. So that that would be a discussion. We're raising points. We're open minded. But eventually, we got to make a decision. Otherwise, if we keep discussing, we're going to starve. And then somebody has to be like, you know what? Just let's fuck it. Let's just go for a restaurant. Let's together. just go grab that hot dog yeah. over there, man. <laughs> yeah, that's not the hot dog place. That's yeah. right. Makes sense. So we need to have that. And it's a great example here. Uh, and since we've talked about an example, I really think that the best approach here is to actually teach with an example. So right now, I want to challenge both you, Shavank, and Pujix. In a conversation that we're going to create artificially among a person who is very close-minded, and I play that role myself, and you two will represent those open-minded individuals so that our listeners can understand that it's actually quite possible to deal with those who are close-minded. So right now, uh, let's start with both of you, Shavank and Pujix. Uh, I want you guys to yeah. state to me some well, one of your uh, strong uh, political beliefs that you currently hold uh, to be true, and I will try to challenge you as a close-minded person. You go, Isha. Oh, you, you should go first. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about the. Uh, well, it's not really political, but let's talk about. Well, sort of is. Let's talk about the climate change. Climate change. Very well. So, first of all, Shivank and Pujas, for real, you guys believe that uh, global warming is a serious problem, and climate change uh, pro- uh, is basically poses a threat to humanity, right? Both of you. Yes. Sure. Yeah, sure, Very yeah. well, because of course both of you are scientists and educated, as opposed to some people who are now in the White House. But still, for now, mm-hmm. let's start. I'm, I'm going to try to challenge you right now, and I say, Shivank and Pujix, with all due respect, your brains are fried because you have forgotten the fact that global warming cannot exist. Last l- last year, I was experiencing a lot of cold temperature. I got cold five times. How the hell can we have global warming when this winter was the coldest of all? You guys are all bullshitting yourself. That's not true. Well, I mean, well, uh, one's, de- one's tolerance of cold is not really a good way to well, dude uh, it was very cold last winter it's gonna be a very cold winter this year too you're saying global warming i said globally cooling we're cooling we need more carbon dioxide in the freaking atmosphere to uh, to somehow make this warmer dude it's so cold. it's chilling you got a cold yourself dude that's how could you get a cold in global warming you got a cold <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. Go for so, it. So, yeah, Dan, uh, how how was it the year before? And 
two years ago. Well, I, I don't have a good memory of two years ago, but I know that last year was very cold. So if you guys believe that the problem is getting more serious, then last year should not have at all been cold like, like, like it was. So you guys are definitely wrong and mistaken. Well, first of all, it's, it's really about, as we call it, climate change, and we call it global warming. First of all, it, it means that the uh, patterns of climate will change. It doesn't mean necessarily all, all a single corner of the world gets warmer. Some places might actually get cooler. Um, uh, and, and it also means global warming. So it doesn't mean that where you, what you're defining, your place, is very local. It's a point in the globe. Dude, so what's the difference between like this? I mean, we had a tornado a while back in the U.S. We had tornadoes during Clinton era 20 years ago. Exactly. What's the difference? Exactly. Nothing has changed in the past 20, 30 years. It's all the same thing. You guys are creating these hoax in the media. It's all bullshit. Liberals are all just bullshitting themselves. Tornadoes are actually a, sh a showing of climate change. Climate change, that's what I was thinking. Are changing very rapidly. But the climate has not changed in the past 20, 30 years. We had a tornado during Clinton era. That was 20 years ago. We, so, we knew about climate change since the 60s, at least, maybe earlier. And oh, God. You're, now you're going way back 60s. I wasn't born in 60s. I don't know how 60s. I mean, you guys are lying. You're, you're a bunch of liars. I, I wasn't born okay. in 60s. What about, what about the average temperatures that are increasing on an annual basis? If you look at just averages, for example, since you talked about a certain year. I don't know about averages, but I know that last winter was very cold. Okay, say the last 10 years, if I told you that the average temperatures are rising by, say, 0.5 degrees Celsius per year globally, for example, would that convince you more? Well, that, first, the question is, where do you find that information? From weather.com or just uh, what's, what's your source of information? How can you prove that so it's I'm, been gone? I'm just giving a hypothetical uh, example, but that's what most... Uh, well, measures. if you guys can prov provide an exact proof that says the average it's going up globally over a year consistently, then of course I might consider it. But but uh, for now, how can I trust your information? Maybe you will find it from... Maybe you just uh, make up the information yourself. Well, the information is very valid, and that is based on this uh, on the radar projectors uh, that has been confirmed by various, um, you know. Who uh, confirmed it, buddy? Who I don't have a scientist okay. in my room to confirm well, it. Including, including. Well, do you believe in your own government? The NASA itself confirmed it. Lots and lots and lots. And there's of there's there's a fact that I looked up just uh, a couple of minutes ago, which says that the ten warmest years in history were after 1998. So that's pretty recent. I'm sure you were much older then. And that's by the authorities. NASA says so, and then climate.gov, and there's there's a lot so a lot of websites that are pointing towards that. Interesting. That might be true, mm -hmm. but uh, of course, how about last year then? If if global warming really is why last year was so hot, it was so cold. There's always exceptions to anything. What if this whole global warming itself is an exception? What if it's a fake news? Fake news made by the globe. What made by the CNN? What is all fake news? <laughs> well, that, that's a good question. What if it is? is? We have nothing to do with this. It's and all fake it's news. Cool. I'm telling you guys, it's all fake news by Clinton News Network, CNN. These guys don't know what they're talking about. It's all bullshit. <laughs> uh, well, if it is in fact fake news, we have nothing to lose. For example, let's talk about a very specific area in, in climate change, and that would be, say, we, we're talking about uh, what we are fueling ourselves with. Uh, either we're using car uh, carbon-based fuels or we're using uh, solar-based fuels, wind-based fuels, uh, sorry, energy, uh, not fuels. Um, the, the question is, if we transition to solar energy or wind energy, uh, we will have to eventually do that because we have a finite amount of fossil fuels and then we will eventually, no matter what, have to shift to different sources of energy. And right now, if we don't do that because we may encounter a certain aspects of climate change, uh, we will have to do it in the future if we exist, if the, uh, if the whole thing was a charade, if the, if the whole thing was wrong. But we may not even get there because the the... the the catastrophe of climate change would actually be le real. So this is a very dumb gamble we're making because yeah. it's a Russian roulette, effectively, as Elon Musk put it, because we're taking this gamble and we are eventually going to have to transition to solar power anyways. That's you can talk thing. about gamble all you want. I got a casino in Las Vegas, baby. It doesn't matter. I gamble all the time and I'm going to win all the time. Don't worry about it. You guys have got to be Trump supporters. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> but of course, you're right, guys. You make great points and I cannot go any further. I mean, you guys made some very, very great points and I totally agree with you because uh, you're making – I mean, you literally have to be an idiot not to be affected by that information, especially I like what Siobhan mentioned about that average thing. That was like really the best argument. I think using facts can really help
when you're dealing with these close-minded people. But then again, there are extreme cases, yeah. and you cannot always hope to have a good conversation, as we exa- as we demonstrate yeah. in this example there's, here. There's always extremes, for sure. Exactly, yeah. for sure. Great one. I really enjoyed this episode, full of great mm-hmm. thoughts and ideas. So now we're uh, approaching the end of the show. Let us try to wrap up uh, our discussion and reach a conclusion. So I start first you, Puchix. After all we talked, uh, what is now your conclusion about this topic? Yeah, I mean, eventually we have to understand that we might be wrong on matters, and that's where we want to add the uh, grain of open-mindedness to make sure we are accounting for the possibilities of us being wrong. And we also, when it comes to decision, we cannot, um, and perhaps in most cases should not stay, uh, you know, uh, inactivated. We should not just be observant. We we want to take the baton and make a decision. So uh, we eventually have to decide on something. We may not uh, say with absolute certainty, 100%, that this is the right decision. But if it's overwhelmingly, uh, you know, uh, supported, then go for it. Why not? And take take responsibility for it. Fantastic. Uh, that's that's, what we can hope that's for. a great opinion. And Shivang, what is your final comment? Yeah, so what Puya said, I would, couldn't agree with him any less. He said it really well. Uh, when I was actually just looking up the topic, I thought I saw the statement which really defines what we're really talking about today. It's, just, it's a saying, it's a quote which says, uh, the test of our intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in the mind at the same time wow. and still retain the ability to function. So if we oh, achieve yeah, the objective at hand, that's what the end goal is, no matter what kind of person we may be. Fantastic. You know, I heard this. Who's this from? Yeah, it's a famous saying, and it, you know, I came across it, and I thought it's really okay. applicable to what we're really talking about. I'm pretty sure Donald Trump did not say that. I'm pretty sure about that one. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but for now, that's all the time we have for that. Was a great discussion I with both of you guys, and I really think that we need to consider this issue and think about it because you want to have the right balance to be able to actually uh, learn new things and, of course, make your own decisions. And I want to thank both of you, Pujix and Shivang, for your time and for your great, Pleasure. great ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. It is my pleasure. Thank and you. to our listeners, are you listening to our shows on the Explorer? What? Are you kidding me? I mean, in this 21st century, you go on an Explorer and then you press on play and you wait behind your PC and you listen to your stuff? Are you kidding me? Right now, go grab your phone and get that thing off running. Basically, if you're on uh, on Apple devices, download the podcast app and then look for BTP. And if you're, of course, if you're on Android, use Google Play and uh, look for BTP there as well. You get all the latest episodes directly to your phone whenever it's available and you can actually receive a lot of great feedbacks and this is all the time we have for it thank you very much for tuning in my name is daniel morgan and this was beyond the present podcast thank you